Dear friends in Christ, I welcome you to another episode of the Liturgy of the Word, as presented to you by Father Evaristus Abu. Today is Monday, the 13th day of March, 2023. It is Monday of the third week of Lent. We begin with the opening prayer. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father in heaven, King of kings, and Lord of lords, we invite you into our midst as we study your word today. Grant us the grace to understand what we read, to believe what we understand, and to practice what we preach. Help us to value what is our own, and not look down on the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. We make this prayer through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our first reading today is taken from the second book of Kings, chapter 5, verses 1 to 15. Our responsorial psalm today is taken from Psalm 42. And our gospel passage today comes from the Holy Gospel according to Luke, chapter 4, verses 24 to 30. The first reading, a reading from the second book of Kings. In those days... Naaman, commander of the army of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and in high favor, because by him the Lord had given victory to Syria. He was a mighty man of valor, but he was a leper. Now the Syrians, on one of their raids, had carried off a little maid from the land of Israel, and she waited on Naaman's wife. She said to her mistress, Would that my lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria. He would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his lord, Does, and so spoke the maiden from the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go now, and I will send a letter to the king of Israel. So he went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shekels of gold, and ten festal garments. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you Naaman, my servant, that you may cure him of his leprosy. And when the king of Israel le read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? That this man sent words to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Only consider and see how he is seeking a quarrel with me. When Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent to the king, saying, Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come now to me, that he may know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the door of Elisha's house. And Elisha sent a messenger to him, saying, Go and wash in the Jordan seven times, and your flesh shall be restored, and you shall be clean. But Naaman was angry and went away, saying, Behold, I thought that he would surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and wave his hand over the place and cure the leper. Are not Abana and Parfa, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? Could I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. But his servants came near and said to him, My father, if the prophet had commanded you to do some great thing, would you not have done it? How much rather then when he says to you, wash and be clean? So he went 
down and dipped himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. And his flesh was restored like the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Then he returned to the man of God, he and all his company, and he came and stood before him, and he said, Behold! I know that there is no God in all the earth but in Israel. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? Like the deer that yearns for running streams, so my soul is yearning for you, my God. My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and appear before the face of God? Oh, send forth your light and your truth. They will guide me on. They will bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and see the face of God? And now we come to the altar of God, to God my joy and gladness. To you will I give thanks on the harp, O God my God. My soul is testing for God, the living God. When can I enter and behold the face of God? Glory and praise to you. O oh, oh Christ, glory and praise to you. O oh, oh Christ, I wait for the Lord, and in his word I hope. With him is mercy and plenteous redemption. Glory and praise to you. O oh, oh Christ. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory be to you, O Lord. At that time, when Jesus had come to Nazareth, he said to the people in the synagogue, Truly I say to you, no prophet is acceptable in his own country, but no prophet is acceptable in his own country. But in truth, I tell you, there were many widows in Israel in the days of Elijah, when the heaven was shut up three years and six months, when there came a great famine over all the land, and Elijah was sent to none of them, but only to Zarephath in the land of Sidon, to a woman who was a widow. And there were many lepers in Israel in the time of the prophet Elisha, and none of them was cleansed, but only Naaman the Syrian. When they heard this, all in the synagogue were filled with wrath, and they rose up and put him out of the city, and led him to the brow of the hill on which their city was built, that they might throw him down headlong. But passing through the midst of them, he went away. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Glory to Jesus. Honor to Mary and Joseph. Never look down on what is your own. There is this proverb in Pigeon English that says, Begin where say mama soup no sweet, neither chop poison for outside. You always think that the grass is greener on your neighbor's lawn. But the truth of the matter is, it is the same grass that is growing in front of you, before your very eyes, 
that is also growing in your neighbor's lawn. It only looks greener because you are far from it. When you get close to it, the color will change. Never look down on what is your own. God has blessed you. Every one of us has been blessed by God. It is only when we start looking at other people that we begin to feel cheated by God. God expects talents from you. He expects you to give your gifts. Do your part. Play your role. Contribute your part. Stop looking at other people. Do not be like the brothers of Joseph who sold their brother out of envy. Because instead of looking at their own stars, they were focused on the star of Joseph. Stop looking down on what is your own. Stop looking down on that which is produced in your own town, in your own country, by your own people. Jesus went to the synagogue, a place where he was brought up, a place where people knew him. They saw him growing up, but somehow they could not see beyond the fact that he is uh, a son of a carpenter. They couldn't see beyond him as a carpenter. They didn't realize that he is God. And they were hearing about him. They were hearing all the marvelous and wonderful things he was doing. And yet he came to his own people. And his own people were getting annoyed at his preaching. And said, is this not Joseph? Joseph's son? Is this not that boy that used to repair our stools and come to do our furniture work? And Jesus was amazed at their lack of faith. And he said, I tell you, no prophet is ever acceptable in his own country. And that is true. We don't accept our prophet. We kill our prophets. And it's happening in our country, Nigeria, today. When someone is good, when someone is really talented, instead of us to encourage the person, what do we do? We kill the talent. Out of envy, out of, you know, bitterness. And I don't know, I don't know the kind of competition we take upon ourselves that the fact that somebody is good becomes a threat to you. The person has discovered his own his own area of expertise. Why not you go and discover your own area and shine in your own way? You know, there's enough space for the whole world to shine, but somehow we are busy destroying our prophets. We are destroying those that God has blessed amongst us. And Jesus decided to tell them a, a truth, a very hard truth. He said, I tell you, it was this attitude of yours that made God to send Elijah to no other woman other than a foreigner, the widow of Zarephath. It was this same attitude that made out of all the, all the lepers, all the lepers in Israel at that time, none of them was cured, but only Naaman the Syrian. Of course, the people got annoyed. Truth is bitter, they say. They wanted to kill Jesus, but he found his way out. Sometimes we need to hear the bitter truth. We need to hear this bitter truth that, you see, we, we black Africans or we Nigerians, we are the ones killing ourselves. You hear people say, oh, it was what they did to us. It was what they, how many years was, how many years did they give us our independence? And every time we want to talk, oh, it was because we were, we, were, we were enslaved by the white man. Oh, it was because of what they did to what? It was because they brought Christianity to Is it Christianity that is our problem when we are killing ourselves? Is it Christianity that says we should hate our neighbor? That somebody is doing well, somebody is shining, and instead of you to encourage the person, you are busy killing the person. Sometimes even brother kill brother. Sometimes even family members, family members begin to fight each other. Why do we hate ourselves? Why are we so tribalistic in this country? Everybody say, oh, I am, you are, you are Igbo, you are Yoruba, you are this, you are that. You are not supposed to, you are not supposed to shine here. And, and competent hands are left aside. Then they put somebody in a position of, uh, 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 in, in government just because the person comes from this tribe or because the person comes from this community. 
We are killing ourselves. It is not the fault of the white man. The white man has not made us who we are. Christianity is not to be blamed for, 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 for the woes affecting us. <laughs> of course, just as Jesus, Jesus was, 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 was almost put to death, one might receive this message and want to attack me. You want to bring a counter argument, that's fine. But the truth of the matter is, we hardly value what is our own. Yes, we hardly value made in Nigeria goods. Oh, this one is, this one is uh, made in Nigeria. Oh, Nigeria, which kind of Nigeria? Nigeria cannot make anything. And this one is made in China. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Bring it, bring it, bring it. We are killing ourselves. Even Naaman, Naaman almost looked down on the opportunity, on the on, on healing that, that was offered to him. Naaman said, I, I expected the prophet to come down, you know, say some prayers, wave his hands, and, you know, do some magical things, and then I will receive my healing. He said, I should go and bathe in the river. The auntie, his servant spoke sense to him. We need people that will speak sense to us, just like Jesus spoke sense to his own people. Sometimes you need, you need to hear the truth the way it is. And they said, ah, ah, Oga Nama, Oga Nama, what did they worry you now? Why you won't come out? If they say, they say, may you go bring person here, you know, go bring her. Simple thing where they say, go bath, go bath, ordinary, go bath, go, go and bath. Yes, the River Jordan was not the cleanest water in the world, but it was just a simple instruction, obey. Dear friends, we need to trust and obey God instead of trying to argue with God's commandments, instead of trying to argue with the instructions that God has given to us. Simply trust and obey, and God Almighty will bless you. Above all, dear friends in Christ, never look down on what is your own. Never look down on your unique gifts and abilities. Never look down on your own talents. Develop yourself instead of pointing you know, pointing your eyes at other people. These people that you see that are shining today, they have spent hours, years. They, 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 they have suffered things that you cannot, you cannot even see. You don't know what they've gone through. Now they're on the center stage and you're looking at them and you're looking for how to pull them down. You will not succeed in pulling anyone down that God has raised up. Go and raise yourself. May God bless his words in our heart. And may this week be a happy and a prosperous one for us all. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. And may the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down and remain with you all, both now and forever. Amen. God bless you.